In one of the songs found in the uh, collected songs of Jason Milarepa, we find his description of what it felt like to give rise to compassion. <laughs> he said, when I gave rise to heartfelt compassion, it was like being cast into a pit of fire. Jitsun Milarepa's words clearly tell us that a true compassion is, in a sense, unbearable. It is an unbearably intense feeling of compassion. <clears throat> Some people say that when they meditate on compassion, that they become miserable that the cultivation, the conscious cultivation of compassion 
produces only suffering, misery, and depression for them. And a state of helplessness, the feeling of, of <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> I can't do anything. I can't, I can't do anything. Nizisadi and the Now, while it's true that compassion is an awareness of suffering, the focus of compassion is not the suffering that beings are undergoing, but the beings who are undergoing that suffering. It is the desire to be, it is in part the desire to be able to, in a single instant, free those beings from the suffering in which they immersed and bring them to that happiness that they presently lack. So therefore, it is hopeful and active. <laughs> I think that it is important to remember this, and I think therefore that remembering that while the subject of compassion is, in a sense, the suffering of beings, the focus of compassion is the beings themselves. And it is the active intention to, as quickly as possible, free beings from suffering. ちゃうみな。だ、Compassion is far more focused on the solution than the problem. In that sense, it is a little bit like the attitude one has when engaging in emergency response. In emergency response, when one finds a person who has been seriously injured, such as in an automobile accident, one does not obsessively analyze their state of suffering or what caused it, what kind of car hit them, how were they hit, and so forth because there's simply no time. Your uh, job is to help the person as soon as possible. So your focus is, what can I do to alleviate or heal uh, this person's injuries? And if we maintain that focus, uh, compassion will not feel like a state of depress depression or helplessness. <laughs> Also, beings are innumerable, so it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to help all of them. Furthermore, 
the wants and needs of beings are equally innumerable. So it would be very difficult to fulfill all of them. So the focus has to be not on the uh, how many beings there are and how many wants and needs they have, but on what it is that you can actually do uh, for beings. Simjatamzelia, <laughs> Drupi I think that in reality, it would be extremely difficult to actually help each and every being without exception. Nevertheless, bodhisattvas make aspirations to do so. Bodhisattvas make both aspirations possible to fulfill and aspirations that are impossible to fulfill. Their courage being immeasurable, they are not discouraged by the impossibility of fulfillment of any of their aspirations. So what we can take from this is that we have to be ready or prepared to do whatever we can and aspire to do everything. That's, that's the causal Mahayana. And now we come to the third of the four dharmas, which is the path dispelling delusion, which I think is concerned with the practice of Vajrayana. I say this because it is taught that only the practice of Vajrayana or secret man, uh, mantra can actually eradicate the subtle habit of a dualistic delusion. Moyer I say this because in the Anutra Yoga Tantras, there is a finally an emphasis on the non dual integration of the Dharmakaya and Rupakaya that is present in explanations of the stage and practice called unity or unification. We can infer, therefore, that these highest reaches of this higher tantra serves as a remedy for the habit of the delusion of dualism, because it would be that habit of dualism that would prevent achievement of that unity. So in this context, since the Dharmakaya and Rupakaya are presented as an inseparable a unity, uh, they're uh, 
is also presented a remedy to the most subtle habit of dualism. I don't think, therefore, given the level of such a process, that there's much point in my uh, going on with this, and I'm going to relocate once again to the fourth uh, Dharma, uh, delusion arising as wisdom. And I think the path that is referred to, the path or practice that is referred to in this fourth Dharma of delusion arising as wisdom is what is called the path of essence, which transcends even the higher reaches of the Vajrayana. So this would be the practice of Mahamudra or the Great Perfection. That being said, it's very hard to explain what delusion arising as wisdom actually refers to. Because when explaining something, you have to, to actually communicate a meaning to those listening. You, by necessity, have to be explaining it in a way that fits within the listener's sphere of experience. And since this is, by definition, outside our sphere of experience, it's very hard to talk about. <laughs> Don't we all have the experience of experiencing something and then when we try to relate or tell of that experience, we cannot find words that capture it. They might capture part of it, but lack something else and so forth. Well, this is an instance of that. Then... Then Certainly we can say what it's not. It is not, this fourth dharma is not a statement that independent delusion, that is to say delusion as delusion, could ever arise as wisdom since they're contradictory. So the easy way to get around that misconception is to say, well, we're talking about the pure aspect of delusion. It is the pure aspect of, of or within delusion that arises as wisdom. However, I think that that doesn't really capture it. I think that's not really quite right either. Uh, we have um, a very strong habit of taking all appearances, all that arises in our experience, as other than ourselves. If once anything becomes an object of experience for us, we uh, perceive it as other. And therefore, anything that is um, said about uh, such, fix such fixation as long as one still has the habit of such fixation, is really only going to add to it, because we'll take that as other too. Right. 
Dene tadıydı kürbeye girdi, işi sadece, yağmarla işiyle tadıydı gibi tüba sadece, yağmarla. Dene Hindistan azı da tüba da işi sadece, azı dizi sanıyor ki, nabır topan için anadolu yarı dedi, tüyen de tüba ile tadıydı gibi işi zaldı ne? Dene işiyle tadıydı gibi tüba çeye da bandı ne? Sanırım da dene zimri. But in sum, what is being pointed out in this fourth dharma is that there is no wisdom outside of delusion, and there is no delusion other than or outside of wisdom. It is only our thoughts of good and bad that cause us to perceive these as two different things. Therefore, ultimately, there is no delusion to be abandoned and no wisdom to be acquired. ตะเนนนําโตนี้เกชินนําโตนี้เยชินนําโตนี้มากาชินโตเทงานะตะจีอีชีเอ่อตะเกยะยะวะตะเนจีอินเซเรตะเนจีกินเซเรตะเนเอ
However, there need be no sense of contradiction. What is meant by a practical or special instruction, upadesha, is instruction that contains within it the, all of the essential points of the Buddha's teachings, summarized or uh, so that you can actually practice them. Since, practically speaking, we could not hope to literally study every single a word spoken by the Buddha and every single commentary upon them. So the function of special instructions is to put all of the Buddha's teachings in your hands so that you can practice them. But make no mistake, the original source of these special instructions is what the Buddha taught. <laughs> Tajikatri, Furthermore, in the first Dharma, the Dharma becoming Dharma, I mentioned this morning that this includes both secular uh, ethics, ethical humanism, and also the other religious traditions that principally emphasize the vehicle of uh, devas and humans. In our practice of the Buddha's teachings, we must be open-minded. We must not reject what is good in the world around us. We must open-mindedly learn about these things. It is um, not appropriate for us to become narrow-mindedly ignorant of all that is not part of the Buddha's tradition. Um, this has been my third visit here to Kamatriana Dharma Chakra, and the opportunity to not only visit you here but also to speak to and with you uh, causes me to feel very, very fortunate, very lucky, and also a little bit embarrassed because I don't feel that, uh, much like a person who should be lecturing others. But I do so in response to the great um, love and a great respect with which you uh, treat me, and I thank you uh, for that. The... 
This commentary on the Dharma Chakra was founded by the previous Jawan Karmapa to serve as his seat in North America. It therefore has become the hub of the Karmapa's activity uh, on this continent. I should therefore speak a little bit about of what the Karmapa's activity consists. As many of you know, from the time of the fourth Karmapa up to the time of the tenth Karmapa, the Karmapa primarily moved from place to place, traveling in a great encampment that was called the Karmapa's Great Encampment. And all of them uh, lived uh, in tents and went to and fro uh, throughout Tibet. Now, given the uh, nature of the land, travel from place to place in Tibet was in those days extremely difficult and required at least one or many days journey to get from one place to another. One reason for the establishment of the Great Encampment was that while many, many people wished to meet the Jawan Karmapa, most were unable to do so. So he decided to go to them and therefore traveled throughout Tibet, even to some of the most isolated areas. Nowadays, in some of these isolated areas that were visited by previous karmapas, while there are no karmakaju monasteries nor extensive karmakaju practice or teaching, they still recite karmapa cheno and remember with great fondness and devotion the visit hundreds of years ago of one of the previous karmapas to their area. Of course, the Karmapa's uh, fundamental seat was Tsorpu Monastery, but an indication that the Karmapas never stayed in one place for too long is that in accounts of their travels it will say, it will say and then he was welcomed effusively at Tsorpu Monastery. If someone actually lives there, they don't have to be welcomed effusively. Now, 
Therefore, the, the fourth Jaon Karmapa, Rupa Dorje, expressly stated that an aspect of the Jaon Karmapa's activity is to travel all over the place and meet disciples of different nations, cultures, and languages, fulfilling their hopes and aspirations. That is restriction of that so the uh, previously established great encampment of the Karmapa ended during the life of the 10th Jawan Karmapa Chuying Dorje. And since that time, the great encampment uh, has not been reestablished. The travels of the successive Jawan Karmapas came to be, therefore, more restricted, which has a, which uh, may have something to do with the fact that their lifetimes became shortened as well. Uh, However, the great 16th Jawan Karmapa traveled from Tibet to India and after that uh, began to travel all over the world, meeting with people of different nations and languages. So in a sense, he greatly reactivated this aspect of the Karmapa's activity. What am I saying here? What I'm saying is that as this is a hub of the Karmapa's activity, we need to be welcoming. We must make everyone who comes here feel welcome, without any bias, without any limitation, through a sect, color, nationality, or gender. And we need to be free of bias uh, in favor of old, those who we've seen before, old students or old friends, as opposed to those who come newly or for the first time. As um, facilitators of the Karmapa's activity, we must be free from that bias as well. เออตาจีจอนกูคงมีกีตาร์นะจีมีคาเซมังบุจิทองซาเรอันเดติสุเลตังอาจูเจเรนชัวดาอันตาเนซิงกีบาดูรุบุเชตังตาเนซิงกี
Tabasin yak is a taran samsa, sorry. Tene, is he does a churan cutting che? Yamba jela, Yamba lome, dirty che, penacudo. There are many people that I really feel the need to thank. First and foremost, Kempokato Rompoche, and also the many uh, people who have worked here, who were disciples and members of the entourage of the 16th Jawan Karmapa, who have since passed away. Also, Bardo Rinpoche and Mr. Tenzin Chinyi, and the many uh, administrators uh, of this monastery, past and present. I thank all of you, because without what all of you have done, uh, this uh, place wouldn't exist, and what we have done here wouldn't have occurred. And now I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> so now we're going to chant the uh, aspiration of Mahamudra. There's actually a kind of a competition going on here between uh, Mahamudra and uh, Dzogchen. Because Dzogchen Ponlubrampshe, coming from Dzogchen Monastery, has the name Dzogchen. He represents Dzogchen. And I um, here represent Mahamudra. However, I think Mahamudra is winning because I'm on a higher throne. <laughs>
Gave gama ose me bama ye gonde gwenge shi Gando ma ye sonjo o me la ta je sim ye shunye do parash Inye she ba kange shun ba me di me she cha kange ga ba Rolende be shunye de ma se yanda dun ye ta ne nge parash Dinye ma do go ve gya zro go dinye do na sa ye se na. Kanya me shinye gwe se sa ne re pra sh. Na ya se la do ya se ye de do gya se la du gya rang ge se. Ye gya se la ga gya se ye be dron do tham se se la che pra. Duce zewe gom ge mal se ta me duce long ge ma yeb Ma se nyom ra rang po cho se be sem te nyam le ke sin gyong ra Cha ra to be wala ra se se yon me sim ge cho ang ang ge ni Se mo nyo be tre ma ta nje be sin te gya me o de bra sh Ta me se la yang yang de be se to me du ne shi shi la gri Che ba Yu la de be yu me se so to se la de be se me ngo Nye la de be nye se ra sa dru se se mje ne lo do bra i se da wan di ne cha gya se da ka cha wa u ma se bo di ne kun ju so je se gya sa ki ju kun ta so gya di so ni ka se bo se ju ju se se ju ju se ka se bo Go len he be me do lu ye dro se me nyam nyo e gyu se me bra Sa se nyam je zin pa ra se dro nge do tri pa ra se ye so Ta me se pa e pa na tra do e me tri tri se nye de pa do bra Dro e ra se da do sa ge gya e ma do ange ta me ko ra e gya Tung a mu da me be sem je la se me ni je gyu la ge vra sh Se me ni je zi a ma ga be zi du ngo wo dong du jen bra sh Chung chu ko sa dra ve lam chu an de dra me ni zi gun du gom bra sh Gom du li chung e zi da ngwe shi ta u sem je mi je sa ge shi ra sh Sangye shuna dribe me la me zo zo me cha zo e ta chin sangye Se che tu che ta nam kura ki wa e shi ni e pe tu Te ta 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 a sim che nam che e ki me la nam ta Ru yu ra in che Ku cho rin che sum la cha sa la ki wa di e nyo Sim jie nam jie di sum sa pa yi sa jie sa mi su shu ti La mi jie chu jie pa ngho yi chu kye nam jie kye pa tu Yin gu lu to ta su sim jie nam jie kye di sum sa ta ta pa yi chu chu si Nye pe si la ta shi ni mi chur ten pe si la ta ki di mi si ten pe si Si tu la ngho Rupa-ra-shu, Tani-ge-wa, Tam-se-do, Lama-mi-gyu-do-se, Gidam-do-se, Nen-shru-ma, Shukyong-do-se, Pes, Naya-ye-me-kong-pa.
为菩萨阿弥陀佛，我们福建人、广东人都有一个慈悲的习惯。初一十五、初二十六，会在门口点一支香。那这一支香点在上面的哦，供养玉皇大帝、诸神；点在下面的哦，布施给好兄弟、孤魂野鬼。所以希望各位把这样这么优良的传统的佛教习惯继续努力做下去，每天晚上。呃，至少点一支香，啊、呃，放在树下门口，给那些可怜的众生。你愿意再点一盏灯，让他看到极乐世界，那更是庄严。你愿意布施一杯水，呃，又放在旁边，那更是慈悲。如果能够每天都这样慈悲，你会发觉你生命改变了，你心灵改变了，世界也跟着改变了。愿各位经常慈悲因果，慈悲时时。阿弥陀佛。ちょっとかぶせ。寒くて、最近はバーベルを触ったら、出来ちゅうれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれえて、もんてれ
咧插落去，你话只是想讲是，诶，我讲你，诶，男子说服了，你话咪只想讲插落去落去，但系你说说，这种搞不起的，等于，等于就是假把人嚟嘅，三二六八米，第八几呢？你睇下你做三二六八米，当下等于七六六米，啊，三二六八米平，我自己证明，三二六八米平啦。那是说，通往他的第二方面，那是南国路的，甚至方面就是说的，呃，地下古国的，嗯，地底边这里，啊，方面的古瓦当，地瓦金龙木兰，哎，这些这些你不背，但是那个这些叫白银，这里主要他就是，地瓦的一些作物的，从第二方面去呢。这些我就搞了，这些这些差不多，三六八八、七六八八、七六八六的，呃，这这种不明白，这一七七七八七七八的接下来，请收看海涛法师弘法讲座。舍身影，暮色深香未出发。